Welcome back to the street. Now, before the break, we showed you a clip of OpenAI's GPT-4 upgrade with a virtual assistant teaching a student how to solve a maths problem, as opposed to the AI solving the problem itself, which is something we're obviously familiar with by now. I'm sure many of you watching are also very familiar with that dynamic, but the demos of GPT-4.0 showed a lot of soft skills, like recognizing emotion, being descriptive, but the kicker could be this, translating speech live. Every time you hear English, I want you to translate it to Italian. And if you hear Italian, I want you to translate it back to English. Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Bravo indeed. Fred Havemeyer, though, he's head of US AI and software research at Macquarie US Equity Research, and he's joining us now live. Fred, uh, I've got to ask you, in, in terms of... OpenAI seems to be the first to really be able to demonstrate this multimodal, but it appears to be, you know, the hot thing. Gemini is also touted uh, la at the, I think it was a couple of months ago, that they've got similar things in the works. Is this going to be what really pushes over the, I suppose, the adoption of consumers over the line in terms of AI, that they're willing to pay up for something like this? I think that when we're looking at what consumers want, I think that we already saw that ChatGPT is giving many consumers what they want as they've been reporting over 100 million users, monthly active users at this point. So I think that there already is a level of fit here in the consumer market, but hey, what we saw today is pretty astounding. And we've already seen that using transcription, ChatGPT and other AI assistants are able to speak with humans and work with them. But I think with the launch today, uh, which is also using the mysterious uh, GPT-2 chatbot model that we've been watching for a while and suspected was OpenAI. Uh, what we think they really did is they crossed a new chasm here, rather closed a new chasm, where now computers are able to understand emotional intelligence as well. And when we're speaking with them, at least using this new chatbot, it seems like it might be a bit more human-like, and it might help us to really get more comfortable with these AI assistants. So that we're not working with a Siri or Alexa where it's a little bit you know, still quite stilted and you're definitely talking with a robot, but now you're talking with something that seems like it is more human-like. And I, I'm, I'm very interested in how that's going to actually be uh, uh, used by consumers. And to that effect, because, you know, one of the, if I'm just thinking off the top of my head, one of the major barriers to travel, I would imagine, is dealing with language concerns. And now, if just with a, a GPT-40 uh, subscription, I'm able to travel around the world and have relatively no problem dealing with the, the, the local um, populations, not having to worry about tour guides. Doesn't this disrupt in a good way in terms of, you know, facilitating commerce and facilitating, you know, business links, personal links, but at the same time, won't this be incredibly disruptive to a lot of industries that people haven't necessarily thought about yet? Well, I'm very excited about it. I, in a couple of weeks now, I'll be going to visit a friend of mine, join him for his wedding in Korea, and I'm really excited to be there, but of course, there's a language barrier. Um, I've yet to learn a tremendous amount of Korean, uh, very little to say the least at this point, unfortunately. But I'm thinking that this could now be one of those tools that's added to my arsenal of AI-related assistance, in addition to Google Translate, which can do visual translation, uh, even also potentially Meta's uh, Ray-Ban glasses that can take pictures and tell me what I'm looking at. I think this is another tool that's being added to the AI arsenal that can be used for different translation services. I think, though, we'll need to see how it actually works in the field to understand if this can work across longer conversations or if what you're getting is more of like a Google Translate with a voice assistant on top of it. Now, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that with what OpenAI has built, that it's going to be something that can work with really dynamic conversations, but we'll have to wait and see. Needless to say, though, I'm excited.